guys, my name is Hamza177. Today I'm going to be playing more of the Amnesia. At the moment, I don't know what happened last recording, so, so I don't know what to expect from this. But I do know that uh, it's been like a few weeks since I've played this. So yeah, I don't know if this is the right way I'm going. Maybe I may not be. Um, that door just opened by itself. I'm not going now. <laughs> just have a look around a bit. See if we're facing. At the moment, guys, I'm, I'm being a bit of a pussy and uh, got the old light on. I know I shouldn't have, but it's kind of cold in here and I'm kind of like recording in my. my Ten minutes past three in the morning. I think it's Sunday today, so yeah. Alright guys, I'm gonna like this recording. There's this guest room. Okay. Got this room. Study. Um, I'll go into that room in a bit. Just, uh, just do that for a second. <laughs> not going in there just yet. Yeah. Game may want me to, but I'm not going in there just yet. Yeah. Fair enough. I guess we'll go where the game wants me to go. Now, is there anything that I can pick up around there? Oof, there is. That would be a bonus. Ooh, little chest. Oh, well, there we go. No tinder boxes and other shits. Is there anything on this side? Well, sorry for trashing the pot. <laughs> uh, I think that's it. Okay, we'll go through this now. Very long hallway. Move door behind me because. You have an ascending room. Will it take us to the inner sanctum? It will definitely take care of the vertical part of our journey. So, you have ridden an elevator before? Yes, the Colosseum at Regent's Park has one. It takes you to the gallery where you can view the panorama. Good. This ride might be a little longer, and in the other direction. shouldn't be here. Yeah, you know what? That's a good idea. I just, I just seen something in my journal. Like, there is a reason why I'm turning back, guys. It's not because I'm a pussy, but it's because that uh, I think I need uh, the, the dark, yeah. The darkness in the storage feels strange and unnatural. Yeah, probably because there's a beast look at lurking around here that I do not want to tangle with. So, Yep, back into main hall, because what I believe, uh, the top floor? I don't know how many floors there are in this place, but I believe it is. I don't, I'm not sure that that is, but I believe it is. Let's go, which one? Guest room? Or the 
Sinister. I'm gonna tangle with the guest room. See what's in here. Daniel's looking for his journal. Okay, well, these rooms don't look too, too good. 2nd of July, 1839. I received a letter today from the Algerian governor's office disclosing the fate of Herbert's expedition. Okay. About a week after my departure, Abdullah, one of the men traveling with us, returned from the desert. He was badly injured, as if maimed by a lion. The man rambled deliriously about the expedition being attacked by something horrible. The French quickly dispatched a search party to look for the expedition. After searching for days, they found the camp abandoned without any trace of Herbert or his men. Tomorrow, I'll retrieve the things they recovered from Herbert's tent at the customs house. I don't know what to make of it, but I'm worried for him. No shit. Him and his men disappeared without a trace. That's kinda um, concerning in my book. I'll take you, because you are as useful with me as anything. Um, what else is there? Um, oh, take as well. Some more oil would be nice. Um, don't you hiss at me. You have no right to hiss me. God damn buns. Don't know if anything will be in these drawers, but it's stuck. Just forget it. <laughs> Just forget that game ever existed. Let's have a look in this old bedroom where it looks a bit decrepit. And a bit bloody for that man. Tinderbox. I should close that door. Oh well, there's no door, so never mind. Okay, well that was useful in ways that I can not imagine. Got a crowbar. Third of July, 1839. Today I picked up Herbert's things at the customs house. I dug through the trove of documents he had carried and found a log detailing the expedition. The nature of this text ranged from quick notes to colorful accounts of transpired events. I skimmed the pages trying to figure out what might have happened. May 17th, the day I was trapped inside the orb chamber, Herbert dryly states, Recovered Daniel after one hour of entrapment. Okay. This confused me greatly. I was suffocating within minutes. How could I have lasted an hour? Yeah. I continued reading the peculiar text. Herbert states his facts without judgment or passion. But suddenly I could read frustration into his text. He pushed his men to investigate the underground tomb, an effort which seems to have strained the minds of his men. Madness spread through the ranks, and Herbert had to take some extreme measures to continue. He finally visits the chamber himself, where he retrieves the orb to the surface. His account confuses me greatly. If he has the orb, what are those pieces in my drawing room? So, that's a dead body, perhaps. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna look at you. <laughs> okay, the wind is being a bit windy. Let's have a look in this out shall we? It's stuck due to a broken lock. Okay. The lock is broken. Find another way to open the closet door in the guest room. Can I just use the crowbar? Keys hidden here somewhere. 
keep this door closed just in case. Fourth of July, 1839. It's done. The orb is assembled. I was awakened by an exhausting nightmare. Shaking and sweating, I retired to the drawing room with a cup of tea. The relic pieces lay spread across the table as I'd left them, but somehow I knew how it was supposed to be. I fetched the tar, which I had prepared to fix the pieces together, and without fault I joined them, producing the orb I remembered so clearly. The tar proved unnecessary. It was pushed out from the joining pieces as they merged on their own, with no adhesive. The ancient stone relic now rests on my table. Its immaculate surface and perfect shape could have been moulded by a factory. This is all too strange. You're telling me, other Daniel, in the past. Okay, well, I can do that. So let's just chuck everything. Um, um, yeah. Can you... Yeah, thank you. Well, that one won't come up. For some reason. That one won't come up. Just in case. Don't know if there is a key here. Oh, bollocks. just killed someone. Well, at least I know that's there, because then I can use it. Let's go into the stuff and see if there's anything in there. We didn't find it. Even though we did look.
to my most trusted student and friend, John Wayne. The most remarkable thing happened as I was traveling through the Prussian woods this summer. I finally found one of the orbs I have been looking for the, l the last 20 odd years. It is as unexpectable as the helodrom helodrom described it in the, hort in the Hortus con clauses. Okay, this is just a little mumble jumbo if you ask me. It was as <coughs> it was as it was told about an underground Mithraic temple crowned with an unearthly artifact. The orb was big enough to fill my cupped hand and the texture was smooth and jagged. Its colour washed while rich. Contra contrast is not enough to describe its nature. It was impossibly an artificial paradox captured within stone. I was studying in a nearby village called Astolt, investigating one of the inquired in oh, I can't even say it anti quantica just, just forget that word trails. There we go. When I finally found the cavern, I went inside and suddenly I could verify the truth of these enormic ar enormatic artifacts that they were real. As you can understand, this is the most important discovery of my life, but it also has become my greatest fear. As I entered the underground chamber, I could feel that I was trespassing. Because of my curiosity, I did my best to fight these instincts and fetch the orb from its place. I scrambled out of the chamber and into the woods. I could sense something was following me. It bailed loudly as it closed in. The beast, this guardian of the orb, was relentless in its pursuit. I made my way to a nearby ravine where I stumbled upon some men fishing in the lake. I tried to warn them as I passed, but unfortunately they remained as I continued my escape. When I heard their cry of pain echo through the valley, I felt such tremendous sense of relief thinking I would be spared. Suddenly a blue shimmering light engulfed me and the colours of the forest were washed away before my eyes. I kept running through the bleak surroundings, the trees had turned a charcoal black with leaves of cinder. Mm. The ground covered in murky water, I pressed on through the drenched land as the glowing ember gave way to the rising wind and drain and rain them. I could hear pleading screams in the distance, and I joined in as pain and fear overtook me. I fell to the ground grasping for air. This certainly must sound strange, but I had been carried miles away from the Alps to a grassy field outside, outside Genoa. The guide had taken the oar from me, but still until this day I fear its return. Sometimes I lay awake at night listening for the howling cry I heard in the forest. It has been nearby a decade since that day, and I still haven't been able to write about the incident. The last time we spoke, you you told me about your interest and an ongoing research into the mythic orbs, and I realised I owe you the truth about my visit to Astor. Your friend and mentor, Henrich Cornelius Grapper. Okay. It's an interesting read. Um, will you not trap me there, Bob? Books, please. Thank you very much. Right now, let's go. Please, where do we go? Oh, my son doesn't look very good. Do that. Uh, um, let's close that. <laughs> um, you're dead. <laughs> a dog. That's that's um 
very good to know. Yeah, thank you, gang, for giving me nightmares. Which way did I come in? No, this is working. So, we'll try the door that we closed when it was open. Normally when there's a sign of, like, places to hide, that's normally a good sign and a bad sign. That's in the box. And that's it. Oh, and, uh, skulls. Okay. Um. Okay, I'm gonna pretend that's not there. That's certainly not there. There's no skulls there. No, there's just a load of broken bones. 1658, January 9th. Further disappointment that Antiquarian's latest findings yield nothing. I'm still unable to grasp the inner workings of life and its relation to the power I sense within it. I shall pursue more books on the subject, but I suspect it will be in vain. Since no more since no research has been made in my particular interest, I must attempt to fill that void myself. Clearly humans emanate more of the energy I seek, but I hope animals will suffice, as they would prov provide less of a hassle to acquire. Okay. Pretty dark if you ask me. Right now, let's go. That's closed. <laughs> okay, let's go. Oh. <sighs> right, well, I think this will do for now so uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this playthrough of Amnesia the Dark Descent and uh, hopefully I'll be doing more in the future um, well as I say in the future it'll probably be like me next week I do this recording well another recording should I say so um, yeah um, I enjoyed it the moment when I had to hide in a cupboard but other than that that went well so uh See you later, guys.